Hi there, this is Helen Tarrant again from Helen. Of commercial property roadshow you're here with Helen Tarrant and today I'm actually going to talk about rural commercial properties now in commercial property I usually segregate them into a few categories some people say oh yes there's different types or class of commercial property but categories of commercial property in terms of where they're located the area is different from the classes the classes are when you're talking about industrial a retail office what are we calling about categories in terms of in terms of location we're talking about Metro which is your city property so that's your Sydney Melbourne metro properties and then we talk about regional that's your large regional towns so that means that's like your Waggas, your Orange, your Townsville's, your Rockhamptons, uh, your Warnables, uh, your, your, your Geelong, your Ballarat's and Bendigo's that's your regional towns and then we've got what we call rural there's a fine line between rural and regional so you can invest securely and safely in regional properties but you need to have a high risk profile if you're investing in rural properties now rural properties can be properties that are agriculturally driven in a town agriculturally driven kind of like your Rockhamptons and a little bit further in like your Blackwater and into your, your further in into more your emeralds which is your uh, your mining town so that's where you would call rural where it's single driver economy and the reason I talk about single driver economy is because there's a risk associated with single driver economies and single driver economies can be say for example tourism in areas of um, cans uh, for, and that's that's not really uh, considered believe it or not by the bank as rural it's actually considered as metro but it is um, parts of cans it's driven purely by tourism so in my classification when I look at yield and return I will be classifying that as more of a rural property because it's further high risk um, in you know, as you go along the lines of risk trajectory so of course when we look at this uh, trajectory of yield, you can start off anything from four, so two to four percent yield in Metro Sydney. So we're talking about ultra metro which is your center of sydney cbd uh within a couple of cases of cbd where you're going to be prime location iconic location maybe harbour views etc etc so you've got that and that you're typically getting anywhere about four percent yield um on those properties now all the way up to you know in metros in, in brisbane areas where you're getting a six percent to your your um your slightly fringe areas where you're getting your sevens and of course we're then into regionals where you're getting a seven and a half to eight percent at the moment even though about a year ago they were about eight percent plus so uh, when you look at that trajectory you can see it's all correlated to risk so the more risk there is the more return there is and that's like anything in any kind of investment so if you're worried about risk then scale back your your returns a little bit and you'll be in a much much more safer location but coming back to rural properties what are some of the rural properties that people invest in obviously sometimes when you think about rural you think about farming well it's got nothing to do with farming well as you can buy farming uh, you can buy motels, you can buy hotels anywhere in Australia. They're not considered rural properties. They're just considered more of a specialized land. And with farming, it's more of a business than a commercial property as such. So when you go rural, uh, one of the things to look for is the, the economy there. So for example, if you go to a West Wylon or if you go to a Mount Isa, uh, you go into a uh, agriculturally driven town, like uh, then you realize that if the property was to become vacant, the available pool of tenants is much more limited. So that means that uh, you are going to have longer vacancy period. You will need to repurpose your property and that would be significant capital cost to you to accommodate for a new tenant. And that when you negotiate to new tenants, the tenant actually has more power than you do as a, as a landlord. Whereas in metro areas, it's the other way around. So. In, in consideration to that, you've got to pick and choose your properties when you're in rural areas. It doesn't mean you can't invest in rural areas. The return is very, very high. It's anywhere from 10% to 14% return, which means that in this current environment, if you're getting a property at 10% or 14%, you get somewhere between, you're clearing somewhere between 7% to 11% in net returns. So if you buy a million dollars, a property that's a million dollars, your net rent could be 100000 
um, anywhere to $140,000 net. Then you take out, let's say, $30,000 in repayments to the bank, you are somewhere sitting around $70,000 to $110,000 return per year. Now that is huge, but you have to ask yourself the question that if your tenant was to vacate at the end of a three or five year period, can you hold out for a 12 month vacancy or more? And if you can, and you can put that 30,000 or 50,000 in the bank to accommodate for that, then, uh, then and this is not your first commercial property. Uh, that is the two criteria that you can afford the risk. So you've got that put in the bank and that this is not your first commercial property because it's, if you're doing your first deal, this can be very, very scary. Then I would say then, you know, give rural a try. I think there is a position for a rural property in any portfolio. It's just not your first starter prof property and potentially not your second or your third. But maybe when you get to your fourth property, it's worthwhile to think about rural because you've got uh, all the other properties that is going to balance that one property out. And that property is going to give you a significant jump in your cash flow, which allows you to tap into the equity potentially of your first and second property where you have more equity because you bought in a metro area and that allows you to then go again and buy again so uh, that is something to think about and that's probably one of the strategies you would use if you were to buy rural because remember one of the things with rural as well is about capital growth there's absolutely very 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 little capital growth in rural areas and sometimes your capital may go backwards uh, so if say um, agriculture takes a hit because of um, famine or because of water shortages if mining went and had a downturn um, and there wasn't mining projects that means that if you wanted to sell your property there's less available buyers and that means that you actually have to sell it for much higher yield which means that you might have to take a loss on the capital but having to think about the fact that you actually picked up all this cash flow in the meantime may, may make it worthwhile for you. So ultimately, it's all about uh, risk uh, versus security as well. And of course, cash flow versus growth. But there is definitely a space for rural properties, but you've got to make sure you assess it properly. You've got to look, like, look at the area, look at the tenant history, look how much they're invested in the local area, look at what else they're doing in the local area to support the locals, uh, because the locals tend to support the locals. Look at who was the previous owner, look at what uh, plans they have into the future and what they have as backup plans or contingency plans if, say, you know, agriculture or mining goes down. So some of the, the due diligence for a rural property will be much more different and it would definitely require you to go and have a look at that property. And there will be a few other tweaks that we would like to add depending on the tenant that's in your rural property. So if you're looking for a rural property and you're looking for someone to help you through that journey and you want to know if it's right for you, reach out to me at helentarrant.com or helen at commercialpropertycashflow.com.au and we can jump on a strategy call or uh, simply just join my Facebook group. The link is below and um, and you'll be kept up to date with all our free webinars and free events uh, so we can educate you more on commercial property and also help you through our buyer's agency program to get you into the right commercial property the first time around. Until next time, happy hunting.